Okay, it's been almost three weeks, I think. Uh, so build update, a uh, lot of work, not a lot of completions to check any boxes. Um, but I'm, it, it's this, the composites are just time consuming. So fitting the, the cowling um, just is a lot, it takes time, um, or at least it took me time to get it fitted nice. Um, to get it cut and sanded and all that, um, it just took some time. Um, a couple of the things that I did that are probably not standard, I went ahead and drilled um, the holes. This is where the, uh, the cam lock attaches. And um, so you have the big hole in the middle and then the two little rivet holes. So I drilled out and am using the little rivet hole to hold it on. I didn't like my, the first hole I drilled was, it gave a gap, so I re-drilled it in the other one. And I'll just fill these in with super fill later. Um, and that's what I did all the way around um, on, the, on the firewall here, the, that, this strip here, the cowling fastener strip. Um, that, that held pretty tight, and I didn't have to put washers or anything under it to have it hold tight. So that's what I did. Um, but it does mean you have to go back and, and fill in these holes. Um, <clears throat> I tried using, um, doing the, uh, putting washers. Evan, Evan Brunier and his sling build series uh, was using the big hole and then putting washers behind there. But in some of these areas, it's really hard to get your hand back there and hold the Clico. And so anyway, this just worked better for me. Um, it, it probably is a time saver in the long run because I just kept dropping the, uh, the washers and, um, anyway, so, uh, this, this door was nearly perfect. When I unwrapped it, I did a little bit of sanding. Um, I, I thinned out right in here and over here, um, because it's just the resin just kind of builds up right here and it, and it doesn't close so that it's streamlined. But this door was perfect, practically, right out of the bat. Um, and I'm really happy how it looks. Um, and I got the, the hinge on today. Uh, the, uh, I installed the, uh, the exhaust shroud piece. And there's a, a gap here, but you can't, I couldn't figure out a way to get rid of that gap. And I've seen in other people's blogs and videos that they had that too. Um, in fact, I think even Evan in his build series had this gap. So I think that's just what it is. Um, I used uh, a structural uh, epoxy adhesive here uh, all the way around um, and rivets, countersunk rivets. Uh, I just, I doubled it up. I figured, and it's a high heat epoxy that I grabbed. So... Uh, I got the spacing, so we got some air around here, and uh, that went on really well. I'll put some super fill and start doing the body work later. This oil door was just not making me happy. It was completely wrong. Spent an enormous amount of time trying to sand it to get it fitted. Um, and it was just like the, it wasn't bent in the right place, and so anyway, and then it had a, a big void, so while I'm sanding it, um, it, it cracked. I ended up um, forcing it and cracking it the rest of the way, um, and I'll get some super fill in there. So I've got a little body work to go here, but I think now it sits, it sits flat like it's supposed to. Um, but I probably spent two full hours on this door and two minutes on the other one, so it's no rhyme or reason. Um, then on to the canopy doors. Um, it's kind of they're kind of challenging because the uh, up here where you do the slots for the hooks that go into the uh, I'm not sure what you would call these, but you know what secures the the door onto the canopy bottom here. All this went on perfect, no issues whatsoever. I, that metal bent just fine, um, no problems. Um, but 
the, uh, the hardware on this door, on the pilot door, the door was fatter than my co-pilot door. So my co-pilot door was probably built exactly the dimensions that it's supposed to be. And all the hardware went on just fine. I, I took it apart now because I'm doing some cutting of the, the slots for the cover piece. Um, this, I started doing measuring for that. Um, but it went together fine, whereas the pilot side did not at all. And I had to do a lot of work. I basically, what I ended up doing was recessing this into, into the, uh, the fiberglass a little bit. And um, when I did that, it gave me the, the length that I needed on the T-handle piece because this was not long enough when I, and this is in the other door, whoops, um, to engage here. So like I said, I, I with my Dremel, I, uh, I sort of etched out a little bit just to give me a couple of millimeters of, of um, recessed so that I had enough room for this to stick through and engage. Um, but I wasted a lot of time with that because I didn't realize what was happening. Um, and I think it's just because the door was just too fat here. Um, whereas this one is perfect. And so door to door, there's some variety for these handmade composite pieces. But the other issue I had um, was that, well, I'll start at the beginning. So when I got my canopy, the doors were attached. And of course, this is, you know, a year and a half ago, more than a year and a half ago. Um, I, uh, I opened the kit and, and um, took the doors off so that I could paint the inside of the doors, the inside of the canopy. But I didn't spend a lot of time studying the status of the doors and how they were hinged and all that. So after I got the door all prepped and the hardware on and I rehung the, the door... It wouldn't close right. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out why it wouldn't close right. And ultimately what I've decided is that the hinges were just not put in the right place. So what I did to solve this, and again, your mileage may vary. You may have a completely different issue or no issues or come up with a better way to solve this problem. But what I did was I oversized these holes until I got it fitted right. Then I did lots of reference lines to figure out exactly where it needed to go back. And then I filled the holes with epoxy. And then what I'm going to do, and this is still wet. I just did this earlier today. I will put this down, get it all positioned. You can see my other tick marks there. Get it so it's perfect. Then I'll re-drill the holes using um, the hinge itself as my template. And I'm hoping that'll be just perfect. It worked on this door. So I, I left this one all secured, locked down tight. I undid the bolts over here, filled it with epoxy after I marked it up really well. And then that was like two days ago. So then today I drilled out the holes. Everything closed fine. So now I took these out after marking it and filled it with epoxy earlier today. And then in a couple of days when this epoxy is completely set, I will um, put the hinge down, get it positioned right, and then uh, redrill the holes. And that way I won't have any slop in the holes. Um, so if you have any issues, so I basically moved this one forward just a little bit, a few millimeters, and then that one I moved back. Um, again, we're not talking, it's, it's amazing how just a millimeter makes such a difference because you're, you're trying to, one, it, it'll bind back here. If it's too far back, one way or the other, it, this, this piece will bind here and that'll keep it from closing. But then the other thing is just the alignment of getting the curve right. Um, I tried a number of different things. To, uh, to solve the problem. And uh, ultimately, it was, 
it was just it was just these hinges just weren't weren't in the right spot coming from sling. So anyway, got that figured out. I'm hoping that the other side is going to be perfect and I'll just have one off that wasn't put in right, um, like I did with the oil door. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Uh, I haven't hung the other one again yet. That'll be later tonight or tomorrow. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's a tip for me. If you, uh, if you have any issues where it's not sitting flush and you don't have that nice gap like you want it, it's, it's very likely it, and, your, and, your, and your top was either you, you hung it or it came from sling, you may have just not drilled the holes in the right spot. So if that's the case, this is how I handled it. Um, again, uh, do what you want. This is the epoxy I used. It's a, this is a high temperature version. Um, it has a name. I cannot think of the name of it. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a family of the structural epoxies from Loctite. Uh, some other builders use this. I also found it on the Vans um, RV Builder website. Um, it just seems to be like a really good high grade epoxy. I bought it on Amazon. So uh, I'll put a link to it on this video so you can just go right to it the, with the number. But anyway, it, uh, it worked really well. And that's also the epoxy I used for the exhaust shroud. And I'm gonna reinforce the hinges here and this top vent. I'm gonna put the, uh, that structural epoxy on there as well. That's actually the reason I bought it was for reinforcing these pieces. But then because I had it, I used it up here on the, uh, the hinges to fill those holes. Again, that was the, the best thing I could come up with um, because uh, like I said, it doesn't take a lot of movement uh, to really affect just the complex shape of the curve. And, and you're talking such a small gap, a couple of millimeters. Um, you just need to go very slowly when you're adjusting it. But again, at the end, I didn't want any slop. So I wanted to fill in those holes and, and re-drill them. So that's what I did. I just put a, uh, I put a piece of cardboard under here with, um, I covered it in packing tape, which most epoxies won't stick to packing tape. And then I just taped it up in that so that the, uh, the epoxy wouldn't fall through. And just, uh, and then I used a, uh, a squeegee to just scrape off all the access and make it nice and flat because you don't want to change the height here either here um, because that'll affect things as well. I actually thought that might be my problem and I actually made a, uh, uh, a spa couple of spacers out of stainless steel um, and that did not help my situation at all. And then that's when I decided I just needed to redrill these. So anyway, that's it for uh, this week. Um, hope everybody's build is going well. And uh, if you have any questions, please post it. And uh, I'll answer whatever you post. Thanks and have a good week.